Hey, it's David Farmer, and today we're going to be talking about a lot of different acronyms. We're going to be talking about SRPs, VDPs, and CTAs. So SRP, search results pages, VDP, vehicle display pages, and then CTAs, calls to action. And this is all about customer engagement on your dealership's website and moving that customer from an anonymous person to an identified customer by getting that customer to convert into a lead by completing some sort of lead action on your dealership's website and by creating the ability to create these calls to action, meaning that we want to engage the customer in some sort of behavior um, and get them to be willing to provide their information to get something in return. So let's just take a minute and look at what a call to action is and how that really applies to a dealership's website. So let's go ahead and jump in. So if we just look at what a CTA is, according to Wikipedia, a CTA is a marketing term for any device to prompt an immediate response or to encourage an immediate action. CTA often refers to the use of words or phrases that can be incorporated into sales scripts, advertising messages, or web pages, which compel an audience to act in a specific way. So a CTA is a very good way to describe how customers can engage on a dealership's website. And when we're talking about sales customers, there's really only some, there's really only a handful of ways a customer will want to engage on your dealership's website, and it's all going to be around their shopping behavior and what goes into making that purchase decision from your dealership. So for example, Entice, our company, of course, we have four specific ways that we can engage customers in shopping behavior on your dealership's website, and we can incorporate these right onto your SRP and onto your VDP. So that's going to include our Visa Test Drive program, Trade Value Express, our trade evaluation technology, Shopper Express, which is our full digital retailing uh, technology, plus Credit Score Express, which is a soft credit pull technology. So for example, if we were going to go and jump into a dealership's website and look at how you can incorporate these types of activities on your uh, dealership's website on an SRP or a VDP, we can look at enticedemo.com. This is our demo website, our faux dealership website. It's designed really to kind of look and feel like a real dealership website, but really just focusing on and featuring our technology. So from the homepage on enticedemo.com, let's go ahead and jump into a search results page. So in our example, we're going to see that we have a header banner and our uh, four Credit Score Express. So if a customer is looking to engage around getting pre-qualified or finding out what they qualify for, we have that ability to engage that customer right there. So that would be considered a call to action where a customer has the ability to engage with getting their credit score right there at the top of the page. Uh, now, with our Credit Score Express technology, as soon as a customer clicks on that banner, we're going to open up that Credit Score Express technology right there, move the customer into the Credit Score Express Explainer video, or they can get their free credit score just by entering in their information. Additionally, you'll see right below that we have our uh, Trade Value Express interactive banner. This is where a customer can start the process to get their trade value just by typing in their year, make, and model, or just uh, year and model, automatically going to give that customer a filtered list where they can select their vehicle from the dropdown and then again open up that Trade Value Express uh, interface. It's going to preload everything and it's going to give that explainer video that kind of gives the customer more information about what they would receive if they were going to continue on with the process. And again, all of our technology is going to be color themed to your dealership's website, your manufacturer OEM theme, uh, or we can customize it in many other ways for your dealership, including customized video content. So 
what we're looking at here is an example of a search results page, and we have some search results page listing. So we get in individual vehicles, and then on this search results page uh, listing, you're going to see some additional calls to action. And we have the calls to action set up in a very strategic way. Um, and let's go over some of those elements. And these are some things that you may want to consider for your dealership's website, uh, whether, whether you're utilizing our technology, other people's tech, technology, or you can kind of pick and choose what's going to make sense uh, for you, your dealership and your customers. So in this case, you're going to see that we have our primary CTA. So a great way to think about a primary CTA is making sure that you have one call to action that is, that is more prominent than any other. Um, so if we look at a search results page listing, you're going to see that our primary CTA is this unlock price button. Now, if I were to move from a SRP to a VDP to see what the primary call to action is and what it looks like on a VDP, you're going to find that in our example, it's going to be very similar. So we call this the CTA lockup. Uh, so this is going to include whatever uh, primary, secondary, ancillary CTAs that you have on your dealership's website. And then again, you can see right here, this is an unlock price CTA. So what we recommend is that you use your standard dealership websites lead form as your primary CTA. Now that message, that call to action, you might want to experiment uh, you probably already have done a lot of experimenting over the years on what is the best, strongest call to action. Uh, unlock price is a very common, uh, very successful, very powerful way to get that customer to engage and convert. You might want to you might want to use just contact us. You might want to use um, get your best price now. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, a, a lot of different conversation, a lot of a lot of different methodologies around getting that customer uh, to convert in what that primary call to action is. But whatever you decide that sh that primary call to action should be the most prominent. It should be the largest. It should have a, a distinct color. It should also, when you're looking at your VDP and or your SRP, another way to uh, set this up to make sure that um, we can engage the customer as they look at uh, your search results page uh, listings and they find a vehicle that they have interest in, uh, from a visual standpoint, having a vehicle image that has this beauty shot of the customer's passenger side of the vehicle with the front of the vehicle tilted towards the right. Now, what, the reason that you want to use this angle for your uh, vehicle image, for that primary image, is that is going to draw the eye towards the right. It almost acts like an arrow. So when a customer sees that image, once they've kind of taken that image in, their eye automatically is going to go towards the right. And then if you have that primary CTA as uh, the largest, most dominant color, in this case red, my eye is going to go directly to that primary CTA. And then if I am uh, ready to engage with that, I can go ahead and boom right into it. I can unlock that price by opening up a simple uh, uh, a, uh, a simple website lead conversion form. From that call to action, my eye is automatically going to go down the page. And then we're going to go from that primary CTA to the secondary CTA. Now, the secondary CTA, I really like the idea of uh, click to call or contact us as that secondary CTA. You're going to see that it's going to be a little bit smaller. It's going to be um, a, a less dominant color, but the placement is going to make that that secondary CTA. So the primary CTA, one singular CTA, secondary CTA, singular, uh, less prominent uh, call to action button. And then we're going to move into ancillary or tertiary 
uh, calls to action. And this is really going to engage the customer in the car buying activity, or at least the elements of the car buying activity that the customer might want to uh, consider. So for example, you might want to look at um, the things that a customer may be willing to engage with or questions that they might have uh, on uh, when they're making that purchase decision. Some of the questions that might come to mind is going to be, well, what is my vehicle worth? Um, am I going to uh, be able to qualify for this? I wonder what my credit score is. Um, I wonder what the payment is is going to be on this new vehicle. Or maybe I want to schedule an appointment uh, to come in and look and touch and feel and take a test drive of that vehicle. So those are some great calls to action to engage the customer in buying behavior right on your dealership's website. Now, those are the four CTAs that we are going to engage with the Entice technology from uh, Trade Value Express, Credit Score Express, Shopper Express, and then um, uh, our Express Test Drive technology with the Visa Reward Card offer. Is it, it can be embedded right in that test drive uh, scheduling tool. Additionally, you might want to think about different ways that you can engage the customer around the different stages that the customer might be in in their uh, their, uh, their their purchase funnel. So, you know, you as customers get closer to the bottom of that funnel, meaning that they know that they want to do business with you, they're on the dealership's website of their choice, they found the vehicle that they have interest in, uh, they're at the point where they're ready to build their deal or buy now. So those low funnel customers might be willing to click on a buy now button or a build deal button, but maybe those top funnel customers uh, maybe would want to engage with more with a configure payment type of activity. Both of those uh, CTAs, calls to action, is going to drive the customer into the digital retailing technology, but we're going to be able to engage them from different points. Now, if I jump back into my VDP, a VDP as it's designed is supposed to have more details about the vehicle. This might uh, include uh, features, it might include different specs, uh, you might have uh, different images of that. Uh, 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 of that vehicle that's available for customer to engage with. Um, uh, and then also you might want to include other, ban uh, other banners, uh, other image CTAs, such as find out your credit score right here, express cash offer, get your trade value, we'll buy your car whether you buy from us or not. Uh, and or even um, looking at a configure lease, configure loan uh, deal uh, with some uh, active payment options available right in the payment buttons. That also is available from the Shopper Express that do retailing a technology. So in this case, we have configure payment, bill deal, and these payment buttons that's going to all do that same thing. And it's going to drive the customer to this digital retailing technology. Now, another thing that you might want to consider doing is looking at the image uh, that you are using for your dealership's website. Now, so for example, if I were to pop back over to an SRP, in this example, of course, we're just using beauty shots of, uh, of a, a Corolla. Um, but one thing that you're, you're not seeing here that you're probably going to see on your dealership's website is that image frame that goes over uh, your, your dealership's primary image. Now, that image frame, um, I think years ago when we first started creating these um, these uh, inventory feeds for third-party websites, they really made a whole lot of sense. You're on a third-party site, you have your image, you want to make sure that customers are associating that vehicle with your dealership. So adding a phone number, adding a, a dealership logo, some, some, some other type of uh, frame that goes around the image, I think that's great. And I think that's something that you still need to consider doing for those third-party uh, website feeds. Uh, but 
for your dealership website, I would challenge you to get rid of that frame. In many cases, it's going to include a, a, a phone number that's not going to be trackable from your dealership's website. In many cases, it's going to include your dealership's logo. And the cool thing about your website is, guess what? Upper left-hand corner, you got your dealership logo right there. There's no reason to um, uh, uh, to add it on every image uh, on that frame. And it actually reduces the amount of space that should be taken up by that uh, by, by the vehicle itself. Um, so th that, that is a, uh, a recommended uh, best practice challenge that I would challenge dealers to look at is get rid of that frame that's on your dealership's website. You don't need it. It doesn't add any value. It actually removes value for the customer. And just think about how that would look if you had uh, the vehicle full screen in that uh, in that image without that frame. It gives such a nice cleaner uh, a view on your dealership's website, and it really modernizes uh, that experience. So there, there's a challenge for you. Um, and um, I think that's about going to wrap up our conversation today. Um, so let's just go ahead and do a quick recap. So today we're talking about uh, we're, we're, we were talking about a lot of different acronyms, right? Uh, SRP, VDP, CTA, search results page, uh, vehicle display pages, and calls to action. Uh, trying to tie in those calls to action with the activity we want customers to take. Paying very close attention to uh, the uh, CTA lockup, uh, how you are displaying your calls to action in a order that's going to make sense from a priority level, making sure you get one primary call to action that is larger, more prominent. You have a secondary call, call to action that is singular, but a little bit less uh, prominent in size and in color. And then you have ancillary calls to action that's going to engage customers into different car buying behaviors. In all cases, moving that customer into lead conversion. These tips and tricks that you can utilize will substantially increase the amount of anonymous website visitors that visit your dealership website that you're able to trans, uh, translate into identified car shoppers by converting the customer into a lead, allowing you and your team to be able to engage in some dialogue. So as always, we really appreciate your time in participating by watching these videos. If you please do me a favor, if you like the content that we are sharing, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and we'll make sure that you get notified anytime that we have new content that is shared to this channel. Again, as always, we really appreciate your time. This video, as well as many others, are going to be available on Entice.com.